Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be exploring the concept of the whole. And that's a whole with a W-H, not just an H. What is the whole? We're in our math journals. Volume 2, uh, on pages 157, uh, Unit 5, Lesson 2. Let's take a look at the instructions. It says, use fraction circle pieces to help you name the whole. Record the name in the whole box, then write an addition equation to represent the problem. Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, Mr. Wassman, I'm watching this YouTube video from home. I don't have fraction pieces. Well, if you check your uh, volume one of your math journal, the one that you uh, just got done with, if you are watching this video, because you've moved on to the second semester of your fourth grade year, uh, in the back of your math journal, uh, there are several sheets of cut out fraction circles, and you would have to just take the time to cut them out with your scissors. But Mr. Wassman, I already threw away that uh, math journal, or I've misplaced that math journal, or I cut out those fraction circles and I can't find them. Help! Well, you know what, friends? You don't necessarily need to have the fraction circle pieces in order to solve the problems of what is the whole or come up with an equation that gets you to the whole. What are we talking about with this whole stuff anyway? Well, when we think about the word whole, what we really mean, or what the, uh, the writers of this uh, math journal page mean, is how do we get to the number one? as in one whole, okay? So if I am given one half, how do I get to one whole? So if I think about it uh, from an equation standpoint, I need to create an addition problem. One half plus something equals one whole. Okay, now let's go back to our th understanding of fractions. If I had one half of something and I wanted the whole thing, W-H-O-L-E, how much more do I need? Okay, so I would need to get a second half. One half plus one half equals one whole or two halves. Okay, that's what two halves are. So if I had a rectangle and I cut it in half, one half would be one half, and then the other half would be one half. So if I add those two halves together, one half plus one half would give me two halves, or one whole, okay? So that's all we're doing here, okay? Is we're trying to figure out what do I need to add together to get to one whole, okay? Fraction pieces are no. Now, just for the sake of argument, what is this yellow piece right here? Well, if I were to create a circle, like so, and if I were to cut it, into four parts, like I did right there, okay? One of those parts is going to be one-fourth. You see how these two kind of look very similar to one another? Okay, so what they're getting at here is that if uh, I had two of these parts, right? Like this those two parts would be the equivalent of one whole. So if this fourth piece is half of something, I'd need two of these pieces to equal one of something. Okay? Does that sound confusing? It is. So let's move on to another example. Okay? So let's actually take a look at problem number three. Okay? If this blue pie wedge is two-thirds, what is the whole? So what am I being asked to do here? Well, again, 
I'm creating an equation where I'm going to add two-thirds to something, and that's going to get me to one whole. So two-thirds plus something is going to give me one whole, okay? Otherwise known as three-thirds, because again, if I take a rectangle and I split it up into three parts, each part would be considered a third. Okay. Here's a third. Here's another third. Here's a third third. Okay. So what I've done here in yellow is create two thirds. So the question is, how much more do I need to create one whole? So if this right here is one whole, what's this right here? Well, 2 plus 1 gives me 3, so 2 thirds plus 1 third would give me 3 thirds, which is equivalent to 1 whole. So, for our purposes today, we are not going to worry too much about this stuff over here, okay? What you really need to be focusing on is the equation, okay, which is applicable to any time you're dealing with fractions, whether you have foam or paper fraction circle pieces in front of you or not. Because the real skill that we're looking at here is can we determine what is the missing fraction to get us to one whole, okay? I always like to think about money when I attribute fractions. So like in question number five, if I have three-fourths, what is the whole, okay? So how do I get to three, uh, from three-fourths to four-fourths, okay? So I'll write my, my equation, three-fourths plus something equals one whole or four-fourths. Now, this is an addition problem. I can always turn that around into a subtraction problem, like so. Four-fourths minus three-fourths equals what? Okay. What's four minus three, everybody? Well, don't shout it all at once. Of course, it's one. One fourth, just like 3 plus 1 is going to give us 4. So 3 fourths plus 1 fourth is going to give me 1 whole or 4 fourths, just like 4 minus 3 equals 1, 4 fourths minus 3 fourths equals 1 fourth. So I don't know in what circumstance that you're watching this video. If you are in my math class, don't fret about the fraction circle parts. Okay. If you happen to be watching this as part of someone else's math class, um, you'll have to consult your teacher as to what they want you to do about the fraction circle question, uh, or in other words, what to do about filling in these boxes. Uh, but for my purposes, and hopefully for yours, uh, understanding that you will need to find the whole, or one whole, by creating a, an equation is really the, the crux or the, uh, the purpose of this activity. We're uh, priming the pump, as they say, to get you ready to add and subtract fractions a little bit later on in this unit. Do you have questions? Oh, I bet you do. Uh, if you do, talk to your math teacher. They will be happy to explain it all to you. All you have to do is ask. I hope this video was uh, helpful at least a little bit, uh, and uh, until we meet again, good luck. Talk to you soon.